Hey guys, I'm Lover95 here, and I am back making videos for you guys. I'm sorry it took so long, but as I told, but the uh, the story I told you guys about in the last video that I was working on, my friend got in the way. But we're taking a break from that right now. That's right, still a work in progress because summer vacation is here, school is out. So now I'm I am ready to make videos for you guys. And also, I just want to point out real quick that my lights have gotten fixed. Observe. And I currently have a cold, so yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. On to the on to the main focus of focuses, I guess, of this video. So first off, quickly I want to say thank you to all of you for getting this channel to over 100 subscribers. Wow, we finally made it. This is, I hope I've been wanting this to happen for a while, and it. Thanks to you guys, it finally has. This is a huge milestone for me. This might not seem that might not seem like it to you guys, but it is for me. Thank you all. So thank you all again so much from the bottom of my heart. I can't thank you more enough. So I'm gonna stop saying thank you and move on with the video. <laughs> so uh, so in celebration of that 100 subscriber milestone, I'm here to announce that that starting with this video. I am starting a brand new series here on the channel. What is it about, you may ask? Well, as most of you probably know, I have been on a Lion King fix for quite a while now. Mostly because I can't get enough of the movies and or the franchise. But, but the, which is the on, honest to God truth. So what I've decided to do is I create decided to create a series based around uh, about theories based on the Lion King, whether it be me giving my own thoughts and takes on uh, currently existing Lion King theories, or me talking about theories that I ha myself have created. And real quickly, I just want to give a shout out to people like Ponage King, Watso Videos, and that pad of Film Theory and Game Theory for giving me the inspiration to create the series. As those three guys have done Lion King theories of their own. The most notable among those three is Ponage King. If you guys somehow haven't heard of these three, and especially the last one, I will leave a link to all three of their channels down in the description below so you can go check them out. So, again, this is, so as I stated before, this is going to be the first video of the Lion King theory series. Yes, that's what it's going to be called. It's a dumb name, I know, but that's what it's going to be called. So how the way this is going to work, how how this is going to work is I'm actually going to be taking a different angle on this series than most people normally would. So for the first, the first group of episodes in this series are going to be character based, meaning that the theories in these episodes will be based around a certain character. And yes, I said theories, meaning more than one. Because each video, which is, like, this is also something that's going to, might separate this theory series from others, is that each video will have many theories in one. So that, for two reasons. One, so you guys don't have to wait and wait and wait for the next video to come out for me, for me to give my thoughts on a certain theory. And also, so you guys can share your opinions on the theories I present a lot, a lot quicker. And so that you have many to talk about. Also, I just want to say that I've already got the first character for this series picked out, but if you guys want to, go ahead and leave a comment down below on who you think the next video should be about. But with that being said, let's get this series started and talk about Theory Center around my favorite character of the Lion King franchise, Kovu. Also, quickly before we move on, I'm just going to put this up here just to be safe. This is also another disclaimer, disclaimer I just want to put up and address real quick. So just as the disclaimer says, I will be spoiling some things from the first movie, the second movie, and potentially the Lion Guard, depending on the character. So if you don't want any of this spoiled for you, then I suggest that if you have not watched The Lion King, first off, what are you doing here? Just a joke. But secondly, go off, watch the, watch the two movies and The Lion Guard before before continuing on because there will be spoilers all 
Also, before we get into the main meat of the episode, I just want to say that before each the theories in each episode, I will be quickly giving my thoughts on the character in question. So, with that being said, what are my thoughts on Kobu? Well, as I said before, he is my favorite character in the franchise. Why? A couple of reasons. First off, I like his character model as an adult in the second half of The Lion King 2, which is where, of course, he makes his debut. I really do like his character model it, as an adult. It's like, he had, he, of course, there's those emerald green eyes. He has that really, he has that really attractive mane. And combined with the scar that he gets near the second half, near the end of the second movie, he re it just really goes together to make one really cool character. And also, and also with a muscular body like that, and there's no way you can argue with a muscular build like, build like that, even if he did have to train all his life to get it. Another reason why I like him is, if this is going to come as no shock to any of you, but I also like him for the fact that he's voiced by my favorite voice actor, Jason Marsden. And Jason, if you're watching this, I highly doubt you are, but I just want to say I love you, I love your work, and keep up the awesome vocal skills. What I... Ugh, never mind. You know what I mean. And the third reason is, I like Kobu because I can relate to him. I, I see myself in him. As in, we both had kind... We both had similar events in our past. For instance, we both gone through... We both gone through events that have left us with some injuries, like... Which... With, which, by coincidence, both happened to be scars... We both had, and we both had not so nice parents. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not calling out names or anything. So, with that being said, on to the theories. So, this first theory was actually inspired by something I heard in a review of The Lion King 2 by YouTuber Brandon Croker. It was at the part where he was he was talk, going over the ambush that was carried out on Simba and Kobu by Zira and the other outsiders when they had learned that Zira that Kobu had betrayed the betrayed them as well as the events that followed. During which he made the following comment. Quick question: What if Zira had knocked out Kobu cold for a day or two, or worse, forever? How would Simba treat the situation then? Now that is a pretty interesting question. So why don't we go ahead and analyze that? Although we're only going to be tackling the latter because not much would happen with the former. So, what would happen if Kobu was knocked out forever? Or in other words, what would happen if he was killed during the ambush? Well, after carefully thinking it over, I can tell you this, despite what many of you may think, it would not, I repeat, it would not change the ending of the, of the movie. And here's why. I took I went back and care, took a careful look at the scene where Kobu gets knocked out during the ambush. And I'm gonna show it to you guys in slow motion. See if, take note and take careful notice of who, just who is the one that delivers the blow that knocks out Kobu. Yep, your eyes didn't deceive you. Batani is the one who delivers the blow that knocks out Kobu. And Batani is the sole reason why I believe the ending of the second movie would not change. Here's why I why. This is what I see going down afterwards. So you the rest of the events play out like normal until the point where Nuka dies. Zira then filled up with rage because of her son's death, which she believed Kobu caused turns around to give Kobu his punishment. Until she discovers that Kobu isn't there. She then asks the prides, her prides of, the current where, of Kobu's current whereabouts, and, and when no one can give a response, he go, they go off to search for him, finding him in the exact same spot where the ambush happened, and also finding him dead. Now, with even more rage inside of her, she turns in anger and angrily questions the pride who could have done this, leading Tani, Vitani to step up to the plate and, and confess the truth. However, Zero does not punish her the same way she was going to punish Kobu. In, instead of scr scratching her across the eye, she just, she 
merely banishes Vitani from the Outsiders and says to never return. So with, and then, of course, Zero goes on to declare war like normal. Now, that's all good for the Outsiders, but what about the Pride Landers? Well, and all the animals gather around Pride Rock as, Zero, as Simba recovers from the little incident that happened as they wait for Kobu so uh, Simba can exile him. But and time some and more time as time passes they begin to they begin to question if where Kobu is. That that is until their curiosity uh, is put to rest when some animals who were just checking out the scene of the ambush come back and tell the king that Kobu has turned out to to have died, which of course greatly upsets Kiara and and makes Simba internally kick himself. And then, of course, this would have, this eventually leads to the little squabble that Simba and, not, and Kiara had it at that part of the movie, which, of course, leads up to, well, all those events that play out until there, until, once Kiara leaves the Pride Land, she bumps into Vitani, which then Vitani takes upon herself to tell Kiara what happened, until Kiara says to Vitani that she already knows. Then Vitani, because she apparently overheard it, tells Kiara that Zira and the Outsiders are going to declare war on the Pride Lands, so that, and so together they team up to stop, to stop the fight. They get there just, and from there, the rest of the, the rest of the movie, from there, the rest of the movie plays out up until Zira's death. Well, actually, I take that back. Mo the rest of the movie plays out with one, with one little difference. The movie does have its happy ending, the Pride, the Pride, Landers and the Outsiders are united, but the only difference is that Kiara is not getting married because there is no one to get married to. She will, from that point on, she will rule the, the Pride Lands alone. And that is what I believe would have happened if Kovu had died during the ambush. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to pause things right there. I know, I'm sorry. It's probably a little anticlimactic to go through all that uh, uh, chatter, and then just listen to my thoughts on one theory. But my word, look how long this video is getting. I really do not want to risk the possibility of this video going over 30 minutes long, or 40 minutes long for that matter, as my two reviews were. I really don't want that to happen again. But don't worry, there are more Kobu theories I still want to look at, so that's why You'll need to stay tuned and join me for part two of this episode where I touch on those. This should be only the, the only two-parter of the series, unless something like this were to happen again. So, with that being said, let's wrap things up. If you like this video, then hit the like button down below, and if you really like what I do, then hit the subscribe button, and make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post. And also, don't forget to leave a comment down below saying who you want the next Lion King Theory video to be about. Until then, this is L1195, signing off. See you in part two, guys.